uh, between last meet, um, last week's matchups, who do you think was like the most impressive player? Like someone that surprised you? Uh, definitely Lamar. I think Lamar single-handedly took over the Titans game. Um, he had the 57, like, yeah, touchdown before half. And that was kind of like that tilt and like, I guess, momentum. And right when he did that, I was like, yo, Tennessee is like, they have no chance anymore. Like they couldn't stop Lamar for anything. Was I was crazy. disappointed in Derrick Henry, man. 40 yards. I I thought Derrick Henry, I, what Lamar did, I thought Derrick Henry was going to do. That's, that's why, why I picked Tennessee, yeah. That's why I picked Tennessee too. I was like, Derrick Henry's going to come in here. Nobody stopped him. People have even put eight in the box. Nobody stopped him. And I was like, the Ravens aren't going to do it. And then the Ravens defense showed up. And I was like, yo, they have a legit defense. And I was it made like, Tannehill look like Miami Dolphins Tannehill. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> he, he was playing like top seven, eight QB the whole year. And they made him play like a bottom tier QB like he wasn't. Literally. Miami. Like he couldn't even make a throw. Well, his receivers are missing. I think um, A.J. Brown, he was, he was hurt or something like that. Yeah, he had a nice touchdown catch. But then after that, yeah, he got hurt. He, and then even Tannehill, he missed A.J. Brown a lot. And I was like, that's that's from because of Baltimore's defense. They were just balling out. So, and then um, were you surprised about what the Browns did to the Steelers? Nah, I thought the Steelers were the like worst eleven and team since I've started watching football as a kid. Like I, I actually called them losing to Washington when they lost to Washington. Right. I was like, Yo, Washington's gonna pull off like this crazy upset and like take down the undefeated team. Then I think they finished what like one in four going into the playoffs. Yeah, so, they were. Yeah, so I I just didn't think the Steelers were that team. I thought their defense was legit, but as a team, I just didn't think they were had it. And then you could tell right from the get-go, they went down like 20. Zip. Yeah. So I was like, yo, the Browns got this in the bag. I was like, and then the, the Steelers started to like come back and I was like, it's garbage time. Like, I think uh, Roethlisberger had like 500 uh, yards and like four TDs. He had like three picks. Yeah, he had like four picks, three picks, but I was like, yo, it's all garbage time stats. They were down by so much that they had to just pat the stat line. So I, I, I had Cleveland upsetting uh, the Steelers last week. No. The only reason why I picked the Steelers wasn't because I thought they were a better team. It's just the fact that um, Mayfield didn't have his coach. Everybody had COVID, and they couldn't practice for a week. I was like, that's kind of hard to overcome. That's the only thing I doubted me over Cleveland. I was like, Cleveland looks like they have a better all-around roster. Like, right. if, you, if you had to go defense to defense, I'd pick pitch. But if, if you have to put defense, special teams, and offense – I thought Cleveland had the better roster, especially on the running back side. And yeah, when he, I found out he got COVID, in the coach, I was like, that might prevent this whole. In his Baker's first happen. playoff game, I'm like, on the road, that's a tough task. Hundred percent. I thought Baker was gonna. I didn't know what Baker was gonna do. To be honest, like I was like, Baker could even come out and play like a, a great all year. He could come out and play like he did his rookie year and just be a dud. So I was like skeptical of that too. But I'm not gonna lie. The, Browns balled out. I was I was a little bit shocked. I had them winning, but I was shocked at how well they won that game. That's fair. That's fair. And then, well, I wasn't too shocked about Washington losing. I knew they would put up a fight because, you know, Chase Young and that defensive front line. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought Tom Brady would prevail, and he did. And then the Saints, I could kind of see them losing to Chicago, but then I remembered they had Trubisky as their quarterback, so I was like, that's not happening. So <laughs> – so I'm not going to lie. Going in, I was like, yo, the Saints got this game. I was like, it's just the Bears. like, And, like, I got it, like, the whole, like, Drew Brees, Saints. Like, they're not good in the playoffs. They lost to the Vikings last year. The, right. I think mean, they lost. They had the, the miracle a couple of years ago. So I was like, all right, like, we'll see what happens. But I have the Saints winning. I will say, though, about the Trubisky comment, I was like, maybe Trubisky can, like, step up because he has been balling out. and. Yes. <laughs> Little hit, like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be upset if the Pats get Trubisky. That's all I'm saying. Well, he'd probably be a better passer than. Uh, I don't even care about quarterback for the, the Pats. It's literally we need weapons. That's why I don't blame Cam for this season. I'm like 50-50. Like some, some of it, I was like, oh, like Cam had just had awful throws. Like, throw. and then some of it, I was like, yo, your receiver's got to catch the ball. So, yeah. I mean, but, but I we, you know what Cam Newton is. So I'm not even shocked. Like he's been in the league for 10 years. He's not that great of a thrower. He's a great athlete, not a great quarterback. That's exactly what I try to say to people, 100%. Yeah. 100%. And then we had what? What was, what was it? Um, oh, the Rams beating Seattle. I was stunned. That that oh. was – that game, I think, was the upset that I did not expect. Just because Seattle was at home, I think they didn't lose a playoff game at home since 2004. Yeah, I, I saw that too. I was like, yo, Russell Wilson, he started off as an, as an MVP this year. He kind of digressed, but he's still, like, a good quarterback. I think he's the most underrated quarterback in the league. That took that away from me. 
He was top three, top five beginning of the year. Now, bottom top ten. I just think the defense got to him. I think the Rams defense played better than what – I think the Rams defense is the best defense left in the playoffs, if you ask me. I think they're better. I think I get – and, like, the Green Bay has a great pass rush. Tampa Bay has an even better rush um, defense there. Right. Their secondary is all right. But I think the Rams have an all-around the best defense. But you know what shocked me about the Rams? The fact that um, Jared Goff broke his thumb, like, two weeks before. The backup's playing – and like they don't, they don't have as much weapons. Like DK Metcalf was held in check by Jalen Ramsey and stuff. So mm-hmm. I, I thought everything was in the favor of um, Seattle, but then Seattle didn't show up. They were home. It was Russell Wilson's time. Like the Rams should not have won. He should have. No, won. I, I agree with that. I mean, you had Walford playing or whatever his name was, and then he gets hurt, and then you have to have a hurt Jared Goff. And I honestly, with DK and Lockett compared to Woods and Cup, I was like. The, it's way favored on the Seattle offense. Exactly. Like, especially with Wilson over Goff. Exactly. And Goff is hurt. That's what I was like. I don't understand how they won. Um, but then that brings me to this week's matchups. So we got the Bills and the Ravens. Who are you picking? I, I'm picking the Bills. I think Josh Allen's top three MVP. I think they have a de- they have a, a somewhat good defense. I think a, actually they have a good defense. Right. Um, I wouldn't call it great, but they have a good defense. And I just think you can't stop Stephon Diggs and the Bills offense right now. I think it's just too much. Don't get me wrong. The Ravens have a great defense. And I think this could be the best game of the week. Yeah. Um, I just think that they have an all-around better team, in my opinion, than Baltimore. But it's Lamar Jackson, so I wouldn't be surprised if he goes up there and runs for 200 yards and wins as well. <laughs> so here, here's my key for that matchup. I feel like if, um, if um, Lamar Jackson finds himself down like 10 to 14 early – it's going to be a slow game because uh, Josh Allen isn't Tannehill. He's going to yep. chuck that ball. And they're going to, if they go up, he's they're not going to give up the lead because Lamar Jackson's great with the lead, but coming back, that's a whole different story. You can't run if you're down 10 to 14 points. No, and no, no, no. it's going to be in Buffalo. Bill's mafia is crazy. It could be snowing. I don't know. If, and Lamar's not that good of a thrower. So I'm like, I that, really don't know. That's a big factor for me. I think, like you said, if they go down early, I think it's all a Buffalo's game. I think it's Buffalo's game to lose. But I think the fact that it's high projected for snow could very well favor the Ravens. If it has to be run the whole game, right. that's going to be hard to fling it through that air when it's snowing and windy and all that. So the weather might help the Ravens as much as people don't think it will. But like you said, if, if the if the Bills even go up 10 nothing early, I think they have the game. I just don't think Lamar can pass his team back to a – uh, um, a win. And don't get me wrong, I think Lamar's a great QB. I don't think he's a running back like the Steelers right. say. I just don't think he's that good of a passer to lead that type of comeback. That's true. That's why I'm picking the Bills myself. And then second matchup, we got the the Chiefs and the Browns, which is intriguing because there's a college matchup between Mahomes and Baker Mayfield, and they were combined for like 600 passing yards each. Yeah, they broke so many records that game. I remember watching that game. It was like 66 to 57 the final. It was insane. That's a Madden game. It legit, that, that college game was about it. it was insane. But, I mean, you're going to look at it now. The Browns get their coach back. They're coming off their first playoff win, and I don't even know how long, like the 90s or something like that. We weren't even born. How about that? Exactly. <laughs> so so they're making history on their own. It's, nice, it's a nice Cinderella story. But I, as much as I would like to see the Browns win, kind of like that upset scenario, I just think Kansas City has way too much on all sides of the ball. I think they're going to – their defense isn't great, but I think that's good enough to get to Baker Mayfield. And I don't care what defense you are, you're gonna have trouble stopping Kelsey and Hill and the, and down the Two field. Two plays, they score a touchdown. That's how quick Kansas City is. They could literally put up 35 points in a quarter if they wanted to. I feel like. I mean, they did it against Tampa Bay. They put up like what 28. The, the <sighs> probably killed broke records in fantasy. Yeah. They put up like 28 in the in the quarter. So I just think Kansas City is it's too too much for that that bit Brad Brown's team all, all, all around. So here's my issue with Kansas City. Kansas City, um, they play to the level of their competition. They've been doing that this year. So Atlanta Falcons gave them trouble. They won like 20 to 17. Um, they struggled against the Dolphins. Like all the teams are supposed to be beating, they struggle against. They didn't play that well the last eight weeks of the season. Like they were winning, but those wins were like, beside, outside of Tampa Bay where they like actually outplayed them, they were kind of just like coasting. So that's the only reason why I might give the Browns a chance but the Chiefs are home in Arrowhead, first playoff game. They're going to be motivated. So I think the Chiefs, it might be a blowout. Like No, I, see, that's the thing. Is I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be like a 7-10 to 10 type of game. As much as people think it's going to be a blowout, it's playoff football. 
I, you really ever see playoff football be a blowout? Yeah, um, in my opinion. I do think I do agree with your opinion, hundred uh, percent, because they haven't played down to the competition. But I think the Chiefs are that team that once the playoffs stick around, or come around, they don't they don't mess around. Right. Uh, I think they brought. I saw a stat the other day where it's like Baker. Um, excuse me, Mahomes is like undefeated in the playoffs, except for that not undefeated. I should say he has one loss. And that one loss was to Tom Brady in overtime when he didn't even touch the ball. Exactly. So, wow. So I just think that Mahomes playoff Mahomes is is a is a different breed. I'm not saying he's like the goat, but he does step up when times does need to be stepped right, up. Right. That's true. I'll give him that. He's one of the most clutch quarterbacks in the league. And then we got Rams versus my league MVP Aaron Rodgers. And so I'm, yeah, what, what's your take on that? Yeah. So I think I agree with you. I think Rodgers edges up Mahomes and MVP for sure, but. This is my upset game of the week. Uh, I just think I, I get it. Green Bay is the number one seed. You got Aaron Rodgers. You got Devontae Adams. But on the other side, you got Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey and Devontae Adams, that's going to be a show. I think that's going to wow. be the show within the game. I haven't even thought about that matchup, to be honest. I forgot about that. Yeah, so that's good. And, and I'm not saying Devontae Adams isn't better than Metcalf because I think Devontae Adams is the best one yeah. in the league. Right. But he knocked out Metcalf. If the only touchdown that Metcalf had last game, last, game, last week – it was on a, a broken coverage when Ramsey wasn't even covering him. Right, yeah. So I think that's going to be a show within the show. And if you ask me, I think Cam Akers has been running the ball just as good as Aaron Jones the past month. If okay, you, yeah. If you line up the stats, I think the running game is good. I think the Rams defense all around is better than Green Bay's defense. The only thing that comes down to is Aaron Rodgers versus Jared Goff. And if you ask me, Aaron Rodgers is going to blow him out of the water when it comes to skill anytime. But if Jared Goff can just not – make mistakes and keep right. the Rams in it. I think the defense is going to be enough to pull, to prevail the Rams over the Packers. I, I, I get it. That's crazy. Number one seed Packers. I, I just think this is the upset game of the week for me. It's happened before with the green Bay. Um, I remember 2011 Aaron Rodgers was 15 and one. It was divisional round versus the giants. Eli went in there and beat them in Lambeau. So I've seen it happen before to Aaron Rodgers. Um, I'm picking green Bay, but. I, I honestly, I'm close to picking the Rams now, too. That Jalen Ramsey matchup with Devontae Adams, that, that, defense, has me shook. that defense is just, they just show me this so legit. And, like, I don't know, the only thing that might be a very big factor is the Rams have to play in, in the cold Green Bay weather. And they play in L.A., so that could I'm be. Sure, a- I'm sure they'll be fine with that, to be honest. That's um, what I'm thinking. I think Green Bay lost their left tackle, like, two weeks ago. Yeah, I heard that. Bak- Bakiara, their best, like he's like their best line guy, which is another big factor I don't even think. You have Cooper Cup, who's somewhat injured, but if he comes back, that could prevail their offense. He's questionable. And right. then the, uh, Alan Donald's questionable, but you know Alan Donald's going to go out there and ball out. And without your left guard... That's yeah, what I'm saying. That's what I'm luck, saying. Good luck covering uh, Alan Donald. You have to double team him even with your uh, starting left guard in there. So with a backup left guard, it's going to be trouble. I'm picking Green Bay 24-17. Yeah, no, I, I can see that happen. I'm, I'm going to pick the Rams. I'm going to go, like, with a 24-21 a to 21 game. I, and I think it's going to be close where I think it's going to be, like, a, a four-minute field goal puts the Rams over the top and then the defense stops right. the Packers or something like that. No, I can see them getting to Rodgers. But um, the next matchup, which is my marquee quarterback matchup of the week, Tom Brady and Drew Brees, and Drew Brees is potentially last game of his career. Who do you have for that? Yeah, no, this is insane. This is like going – this should be going on in the history books of history books. I mean, you have these two old quarterbacks who are top five probably all time if you want to compare it. You know me, I think Tom Brady's a go for, by none. But mm-hmm. I think this is the marquee matchup for quarterbacks. I have the Bucks winning. And I think that the Saints – I have a better defense all around. I think the uh, – excuse me, I think the Bucks have a better rush defense, but the Saints have a better – um, rush slash uh, secondary. The right. Bucks secondary has struggled recently. You've seen it last week, no. the whole season. Mahomes and everything, yeah. So that's something that's questionable for me. But I think the Bucks, they've been playing really well in terms of getting their offense kind of with Bruce Arians and Tom Brady mentally combining together. It's right. been kind of fluidly coming together more so than the beginning of the season. And it's tough to beat the same team three, three times in a season. And you know Tom Brady in, in the playoffs, he's just – Bow none, one of the best playoff quarterbacks of all time. I'd say he's the greatest playoff quarterback of all time. 100%. Um, I personally, I'm scared because they did beat 
the Saints. I mean, they did beat the Bucks twice. Yeah, and it wasn't just like close games. Like the second game, Tom Brady threw three picks and everything. But I think that was more to do with Arians' offense than yeah. less to do with Tom Brady. And they learned a lot because that offense is a lot of risk and it's vertical. Hundred so, percent. I think they are finally hitting their stride with the Bucks offense, and you know they have Mike Evans, they have Antonio Brown. Um, so I expect less turnovers, closer game. But I have Tom Brady pulling it off because he's going to figure out that Saints defense. He's going to see them for the third time this season. So he's going to know something. That's what I'm saying. I think Tom Brady – it's hard to trip Tom Brady once in a game. Now, having to play him three times, like, don't get me wrong. Sean Payne, that defense is going to come out and they're going to do some special things. But I just think Tom Brady is going to read it well. Right. And then the big factors for me is two big factors. you got Landon Fournette, who's probably going to be starting over Jones. And – this, the Bucks need to run the ball early and they need to be effective. Why? Right. Because Tom Brady does not just fling the ball down. He needs that play action to exactly. get to, to get to Evans and get to get to Brown. And another big factor for me is Thomas is back. Like Thomas played in the second Bucks game, but Thomas is actually back. Yeah. He, he I think he had a touchdown like almost a hundred yards last week against the Bears. I didn't even so, know he hadn't had a touchdown all year until last week. Des Bryant had more touchdowns in the regular season. <laughs> than, than Michael Thomas. And don't get me wrong. If you picked him in, in the first round of fantasy, I get it. I picked Saquon Barkley. That, that, so I was there with you. But <laughs> in real life, Thomas is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL too. And it's going to be interesting how that secondary is going to stop him. Because yeah. that's I think that's the biggest weak, weakest weakness point for the Bucs is their secondary. You saw it against Kansas City perfectly and Tyree Kill. I mean, that dude literally lit them up. Right. And if you're smart, you you don't play prevent the whole game, but you don't let up those 80 yard bombs to let them go up quickly. Because I don't think the Bucs can overcome a four, another 14, 20 point deficit. They couldn't even overcome the, the Kansas City one. They made it close, but they couldn't overcome it. So right. I think Drew Brees, his arm is shot. Now, I'm not saying like Peyton Manning level shot like his last year. But he can't throw it that deep anymore. And I feel like he might give the, the team an opportunity to get some turnovers. I think that's another thing. If you get to Breeze early, and don't get me wrong, you have a great front line with Pierre Paul and Dominic and Sue. So you can get to the quarterback, and they have gone to the quarterback a lot. If you hit him early, he's going to make mistakes. You've seen it this year already. And I don't know. I, I feel like broken ribs, they take a while to recover. So I don't think he's fully healed from that. You hit him once in his ribs in the right spot, he's going to start feeling that too. So he'll be – It'll be quick in the pocket. They, they do have play. Kamara, though. The short passing game will be on, on deck. Don't get me wrong. If Kamara balls all like he did the last week of the season with those six tuggies, I don't know if you can beat the Saints. I don't know if any team could beat the Saints if he does that. But, again, they the Saints – I mean, the Bucks have one of the best rushing offenses and um, defenses in the league. Right. And I think that's going to be a key factor is if you can stop Kamara and have Breeze beat you. Don't get me wrong. Breeze can beat you. But I think this year, you rather have Breeze try to beat you than let Kamara. Exactly, win. yeah. Speaking oh. of Kamara, my friend, he had him on champion on um, the championship game. He uh, got six touchdowns for him, 50 points. He still ended up losing by 0.5. That's that's bad. That's that's just a bad beat. I mean, if you had Kamara, you should have. I know someone who had Kamara and Evans, and Evans lit up for 35. So he, like, dominated the championship. But if you had Kamara and lost, that, that's that means your entire team's trash. 